for Roberto Cyborg as he looks to do double gold here at the IBJJF Nogi World Championships. And I think it's fair to say that he's a favorite to do it. I think so. I mean, we saw what he did earlier in the semi-final of the Ultra Heavyweight Division against Victor Hugo. This is the final. Roberto Cyborg in the black, James Paul Polo in the black and white. And Roberto Cyborg will compete again, win or lose, in the absolute division final later on against Victor Hugo, who he already beat in the Ultra Heavy semi-final. So, Cyborg is 20 minutes of match time away from a double gold here at the Nogi World Championships, not his first, which if he does that, that'll make him a seven-time Nogi Black Belt World Champion. Beautiful. Nice transition by Cyborg. Cyborg and the wrestling, I'm loving it. It's improved. I, I, I'm telling you, I've known Cyborg for a long time, I will. He used to not be a wrestler. That's his new. wrestling's looking better than ever, really. This year, he's proved it that his wrestling is, uh, is phenomenal. He's doing something down there with the fight sports guys in Miami, Florida, and he's got them all training it, and it's really good to see jujitsu guys using legit wrestling in their matches, right? Yes, and I remember like Cyborg coming up was always a guard player. He was never stand up. He was always pulling guard at the same size. I think he was like 19 years old. He had that size, right? He's always been a big guy. But it, his wrestling has really improved, and it's made all the difference. And here we are with just over eight, minute and th eight minutes and 30 seconds left. Cyborg up by two points. James Pupulo is no joke, though. Anything could happen. I could see him recovering guard and sweeping Cyborg, pulling something off. Very experienced competitor as well. Not quite as experienced as Cyborg, but certainly he's been in the circuit for a long time. I'm liking that wrist control that he was using there and just constantly bothering poor Polo. He's grabbing his wrist, he's grabbing his arms, he's He's attacking with his hooks. He's got his shin in the back of the knee, and it's yes. really hard for Paul Polo to man the defense because he's constantly on the defense himself. But there's a good guard recovery there from Paul Polo. Beautiful transition there. I saw if you can get heavy on the hips, you can get the half guard. Yeah. So half guard, underhook on the inside, no cross face, but Paul Polo's got one butterfly hook in. Yeah, that should be enough to get Cyborg off. Oh, no, he lost the butterfly. Yeah, so Pupolo actually now trying to bridge and roll, but Cyborg going over to the back. He's got the one hook. Beautiful got the second back hook. take. Four points for Cyborg. And he's got to keep digging. Can't stop attacking or James is going to escape. It's exactly what happened. Lost oh, the upper body nice. control there. Non-stop movement here. This ultra heavyweight moves like a lightweight. Roberto Cyborg, 39 years of age, and just looking as good as ever against James Popolo here in this final. 6-0 up, and we're only just over three minutes into this match, Robert. Yes. Cyborg brings it. And I remember during the Nogi Grand Prix uh, earlier this year, it's like everyone like towards the end of the fight was like a little winded, except Cyborg. Oh, He's he the kept most strong. Yeah. He was the most uh, well-conditioned uh, competitor in the whole bracket. And Cyborg has six points and three advantages. James has got his hands full. I wonder what the game plan is going to be. Is he going to take him down or pull? I think James Popolo's best strategy is to pull guard on Cyborg. I don't think he's going to take him down. And... And being on top of Cyborg is no fun either. So yeah. you better, I mean, not that being underneath him is any fun, but given everything else that's going on in the score, I think James' best bet is he's got to either get to the back or just pull a guard and, and then sweep and get to the back or pull off a quick sub. Oh, beautiful. nice foot, foot sweep. sweep. Oh, that was a beautiful trip. With just a little block. Perfect use of the clinch to direct Popolo over that foot prop. And immediately on the attack once again 8-0 up cyborg oh look at him just a little a little look at the, the scoreboard the clock 
and you can just sense him getting stronger. Yes, like he, you know, and James is a little, seems a little not sure, whoa, what the strategy is for the fight. Like, I'm not sure he's got a game plan at this point. He definitely is some guy that's like he, I don't think he can out-wrestle Cyborg. I think he knows that, but he doesn't want to be underneath Cyborg either. I think stylistically it's just a bad matchup for James. Yeah, James has got to change levels a little bit more. He seems to look a little tall. Yeah, oh, see. there it is again. Yeah. He, oh, beautiful foot sweep. He's standing a little too tall in front of Cyborg. He's making himself available for not only foot sweeps, but also for shots. So I think his wrestling stance has got to get a little bit lower. Cyborg saw it, took advantage of it, and here he is in side control. Oh, he's going to go for the Kimura. He's got it locked up. He's got the two-on-one grip. There it is. Nice. Straight arm lock. Roberto Cyborg. Great win by Cyborg. A little Cyborg. under six minutes into the match. Scores the arm lock from top position after going 10-0. We're going to have some replays of that as well. It's Cyborg, now a six-time gold medalist. Possibly make it seven later this afternoon, but... Your winner, Roberto Cyborg Abreu. All right, let's take a look at some of the key moments from this match here. Here was the submission, yeah. locks up the Kimura grip, but the actual finish was more like a straight arm lock. There you yeah. can see. Definitely a straight arm lock. Attacking the elbow joint, hyper extending it to the point where Pulpolo had to tap out.